geography lesson, we're covering theme 5, element 4, low pressure systems. So set your calculator to geography mode, I'm Mr S and I'll be your 5 minute geography teacher. We're going to be looking today at how to identify low pressure systems on a synoptic chart and what one of those is. We're also going to be looking at what hazards a low pressure system can produce. But first, let's have a look at this uh, recap of low pressure. So we know low pressure is when we have warm air rising because of surface heating. That rising air is also going to carry moisture with it up into the upper atmosphere where it will condense and form clouds and rain. The greater the heating, the faster that process is going to occur, the more energy that's going to end up in the upper atmosphere along with moisture, which is going to lead to more clouds, more rain, bigger storms. But what would that look like if we tried to map it? Well, this is a synoptic weather chart and it's shown us a couple of different things. So first of all, we've got these grey lines and they look like contour lines. These are called isobars and isobars connect similar values together. So on this map, they're connecting similar areas of pressure. We've also noted the distance between these bars. So where this arrow is pointing, we notice that we've got some really close together isobars. And these are indicating that it's a quick change between one pressure value and another. So the pressure is dropping very quickly the closer we get to this X. That's important to note because where we've got really close together lines represents also strong winds. We've got an example here where we've got quite a lot of distance. So between here and here, it takes a longer time for the pressure to change. So it's going to be a lot calmer. We've also got this X and an L and a number. So this is like a spot pressure point. So that's X is indicating the center of the low pressure system and the 298 is representing 200, sorry, 928 millibars of pressure. So anything under 1000 millibars is generally seen as being low pressure, anything over is seen as high pressure. One thing that is on the map and we haven't highlighted are these blue lines with semicircles and triangles. They represent weather fronts. We're not going to have a look at those today, but there is a complex interaction between these that we will cover at another time. If this low pressure system was occurring a little further south near the equator, then this could produce a tropical storm. So tropical storms can be named depending on where, they lo um, where they're formed. So in the northern hemisphere around North America, they're called hurricanes. They're also called cyclones and typhoons. They need to occur between 8 degrees north and south of the equator and between 20 degrees north and south of the equator. So it's in a band around the equator. We need ocean temperatures of at least 27 degrees Celsius and we need oceans that are at least 50 meters deep to produce them. Essentially the ocean is like the battery, the energy source for these huge storms. On this diagram you can see there's a central column of anti-clockwise spiraling air that's ascending upwards. This is ascending really, really quickly because as we discussed, we need warm surface temperatures. So the surface of the ocean is encouraging the air to rise rapidly. And it is replaced by cold air descending down. This entire cloud bank that forms the hurricane is rotating anti-clockwise. The outer edges, you'll find a lot of rain and the strong winds throughout, but the strongest winds are found near the eye wall. Now the characteristics of these, they can move up to 120 miles per hour, uh, kilometers per hour and up to 600 kilometers a day, but they do lose energy when they leave the ocean. So a hurricane that is moving through the Atlantic Ocean and let's say it moves over Florida, as soon as it moves onto land, you've removed its energy source. So it's going to lose energy over time until it dissipates from being a hurricane to an extra tropical storm to just being a storm. I have included as well some information on hurricane, sorry, uh, cyclone Pam. The, pro, uh, the idea of these videos is to give you some idea of the theory and a recap of the theory. So I'm not going to go through case study facts. I would encourage you to do your own research on the case studies that you've done in class or ask your teacher for some extra information on those. Well, that wraps up our five minute lesson for today. No need to feel depressed over low pressure anymore. 
Don't forget to complete the Try It Now tasks for homework. Class dismissed.